Hi, how you doing? It's Russell James. In this video, I wanna show you how to make amazing coconut kefir. And you may have found this video because you were looking to learn how to make kefir, or this might be new to you. Either way, I'm gonna walk you through three different steps. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to um, make more grains. When you've got a small starter amount, I'm gonna show you how to grow more. Then I'm gonna show you how to make water kefir. So uh, we're gonna use coconut water, and then we're gonna take that on, and I'm gonna show you how to do a second stage fermentation on the coconut water kefir. We're gonna put some fruit juice in there and make it fizzy. So these are the kefir grains, and you can see they're kind of just, they're not grains because they're wheat, they're just grains because these little kind of blobs of, uh, of goodness <laughs> that are really gonna um, turn our coconut water into this de delicious probiotic drink. Now you can get these from a friend. Anyone who uh, makes kefir and has got grains will definitely give you some and they'll donate some because it's so easy to grow them, as you're gonna see in a second. And uh, you can also get them on eBay if you don't know anybody that, uh, that grows them. So if you're looking on eBay or anywhere online to buy these, you would want to search for water kefir grains or sugar kefir grains. And uh, I'm also gonna put this information down underneath this video as well, so you've got it in written format and there'll be a few extras under there as well, just to clarify this process. Because I know it can be a little bit of a scary thing um, when you're culturing things and uh, you're unsure whether it's safe to drink and it just it's a living thing, so it seems a little bit scary. So as I say, I'll walk you through that process. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is take our water, it's about one and a half liters or between six and eight cups of um, spring water, preferably. Not tap water, just because A, you don't really want to drink tap water, depending on where you are, but generally, you're not going to want to drink tap water, and the reason is because it's got impurities in it, and so that is obviously going to affect our kefir grains as well. So, um, this the purest water you can get. You don't want to use distilled water because there's just, there's no minerals in there, so it, it's, the kefir hasn't got anything to work with. So, yeah, a spring water is ideal. Now, to grow our grains, is a slightly different mixture from um, what we would use to make coconut water kefir. So, um, what you may or may not like the resulting liquid, the flavor of it from this growing stage, but if you don't like it, it's still keep it, keep it in the fridge. It's um, still got the good probiotics in it, and you know, you can always add it to smoothies in small amounts, so you still get the benefit of it but not necessarily taste it. I'm also gonna show you how to make kind of a ginger beer from it as well, so that's another idea that we can go into. Um, so, we're gonna start off with our coconut sugar. Now you can use white refined sugar, but you know if we're using sugar, ideally we wanna be using the most nutritious source or version of sugar that we can find. And that's generally any of the kind of the raw, unprocessed, darker sugars. So that's coconut sugar, and what I found is that to grow these grains really quickly, a mix of two different types of sugar. So we've got the coconut and we've got organic blackstrap molasses here. So the molasses is the, the most nutritional part that's left over of the sugar. And you can see it's really sticky, but once it's, uh, once it's been in here, ideally we'd leave it in there for about 30 minutes just to kind of soak in there and once it's it's been in there about 30 minutes, you'd be able to stir it up and it would dissolve. Um, but for the purposes of the video, you can, <laughs> you can spend all day doing this. For the purposes of the video, uh, I'm just gonna put the grains straight in there and not let it soak, uh, and we'll stir it afterwards. So the, the final part of the, the jigsaw, if you like, is bicarbonate of soda. So I'm gonna use an eighth of a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda and what this does is keeps the pH of the liquid just right during the fermenting process. So you've got maximum chance of growth and uh, maximum chance of keeping these healthy. Um, so what I'll do is just give that a little stir. As I said, if that had been sitting in there for longer at this point, the molasses would have dissolved better, but it will still work. And then into that liquid, we're gonna pop our kefir grains. Now you could just use your finger to do this. Um, I'm gonna use a spoon. Now I get a lot of questions about metal spoons and metal instruments and uh, using with kefir grains because metal, reactive metal can damage the grains. 
But stainless steel is the one metal you can use. So as long as you know it's stainless steel, you can use a stainless steel spoon, stainless steel sieve when we come to do that. Um, but if you're unsure, just use plastic. So in they go. Now at this point, they will just kind of fall to the bottom. And all we need to do is, I'll take this off of the one that I'm gonna show you in a second, but I just like to use a nut milk bag. If you're into raw food, you're probably quite familiar with a nut milk bag. You can find these online very easily as well. Um, any, any kind of mesh that's gonna allow that to breathe, but not let any insects in there. If you happen to get a, a rogue ant just finding his way to your sugary water mixture. Um, and then we're gonna leave that for two days. So two days is really the ideal. Um, you can sometimes get away with three days, but um, if you do too many three day fermentations, you're gonna ruin the grains. They just tend to not thrive in, that, in uh, liquid for too long. And actually also two, two days as far as taste and probiotic culture is concerned is, is really ideal and, and growth as well. And what you're gonna probably find is that over the two days, you get between 100 and 150% growth. So you should find that your grains at least double. Um, now what you'll also find after about 24 hours is that these grains start to kind of rise up to the top as they produce gas, as they grow. They'll kind of rise up to the top. You might find them suspended halfway between the top and the bottom, also floating around on the top. And that's a good sign. It just means they're producing gas, they're growing. And uh, you'll actually, you can sit and see them kind of moving up and down um, after 24 hours. It'll kind of, it really looks like a living thing. So this is kind of what you'll get, the point you'll get to. As you can see, we've got some grains floating on the top here. Um, when you kind of put it down, you might notice that in your, when you do that in your mixture that you get the bubbles coming up, um, the gas bubbles from the, the grains down the bottom there. And uh, you can probably see them kind of floating around there as well. So that's all a good sign that you've had some growth. Um, now, all we need to do from here is, is strain them off. So you can see what the fully grown grains look like. So as I mentioned, I'm just going to use a, a plastic strainer. Strain those off. Okay, and then you get that resulting kind of they look like bigger blobs at this point because they've been growing and they kind of stick together. So from there, you just want to give these a quick wash off. Again, I do know people that have done this with tap water and done it okay, but I just prefer a little bit of spring water over there. Give them a quick wash. You can see they're a little bit darker than the ones I'm going to show you in a second that have been in coconut water because they take on the color of that sugar. And uh, now these, you'll get to a point probably when you're growing them and you're you won't know what to do with them. So you won't have anyone you can give them to and, and you won't need to use them. So you can keep them actually just in, in a mixture of water and sugar. So, you know, like six cups of water with just a little bit of sugar to keep them fed and put them in the fridge. You can keep them like a, a week in that condition. Or you can actually freeze them. You can freeze them for up to six months. The thing about when you unfreeze them is it's going to take a good couple of batches to get them re reignited if you like. So they've been in the deep freeze for a while. Um, when you do this like over and over again, it's gonna take a, probably three to four weeks to keep doing that um, a couple of times a week to really get them started again. So you've got options. Or you could start up your own little cottage industry selling them on eBay like everyone else uh, seems to do, which is a good thing because it means everyone can get access to the kefir grains. So um, this liquid, like I said, you can put this into smoothies. Uh, it doesn't taste amazing as it is, but what we can also do is turn it into like a ginger beer, which I've done here. Now you can probably see there, we've got bubbles forming. And uh, when I open this, you never quite know how fizzy it's gonna be. So this has been um, at room temperature for two days now. And, and if you get a bottle like this where the the top seals really tightly and doesn't let any gas out. I'll open that in a minute. But if you get one that doesn't let any gas out, you're gonna end up with a nicely carbonated drink. So a good strong seal is what you need. So I've got my funnel, I'll pop that in there. 
Now for the second stage fermentation, for extra fizziness, you want to add a little bit more sugar. Um, something I didn't mention actually in that first part is that there's people that have done tests on these things and have weighed the amount of sugar beforehand and then reduced the liquid down and weighed the resulting sugar at the end of the fermentation, at the end of the two day process. And it reduces the amount of sugar by about 80%. So if you're worried about all the sugar, actually the grains, that's what makes the fermentation happen is they eat the sugar. So we'll put a little bit more sugar in here to get this fizzy. So that's a tablespoon of sugar. And then we'll put our sugar kefir liquid in there. And then ideally we want to leave about an inch from the top and you can already see there's bubbles starting to starting to form there and then I'm going to take some ginger we'll cut the skin off of that So you just want to cut that down so that it fits in your in your bottle. Okay, I'm just going to let take a little bit of that liquid out, obviously after I put the, the ginger in there. It's taking up space. I just want to leave room for it to create that gas in there. Uh, so yeah, again that just falls to the bottom, seal it up tightly. And then, you know, obviously once the gas has had a, an effect on it, it rises to the top like that. So let's get this one opened. Uh, so ideally you want to do this over a sink, like, like I said, you can never know exactly how, um, how fizzy this is going to be, but uh, when you've done this, like I just did, you can actually just put that straight in the fridge, it will still fizz up, it just slows the process down. Um, but if you want a, a really carbonated drink and you want it quicker, um, then do it at room temperature. And obviously in the summer, it's, you get a much fizzier um, drink because it's generally warmer. So let's get this one opened, you'll find actually that if you don't want it to get too fizzy, there you go, it's starting to fizz up now. If you don't want it to get too fizzy, you can come back to it and burp it every day, just let the, the lid off, and um, you'll find that uh, that the gas just escapes and it's, it's all good. So this will go in the fridge now, and um, you can it will actually keep for, for months in the fridge, and uh, you know, it probably won't last that long. So um, I'll just enjoy that from the fridge as and when I want. And uh, next thing I'm going to show you how to do is the coconut water kefir. So the coconut kefir um, is actually a lot simpler and tastier in my opinion. And um, the reason we don't just, as I mentioned, we don't just keep doing coconut water is there's not enough sugar in there really, ideally, to keep the uh, grains happy and growing. But if you do if you just use one lot of, of grains and do the, the sugar water mix and then do coconut water and just alternate between the two, you'll have some really happy little grains and they'll just reproduce and, and make amazing coconut kefir for you for the rest of their days. They just keep going by the way. They don't, uh, the only time they're going to die is if you mistreat them. <laughs> so, uh, so look after them and they'll treat you well. Coconut water, ideally if you can get young Thai coconuts, that would be premium way of doing this nutritionally 
fresh coconut water is obviously better than pasteurized out of a carton. Um, I'm actually using the pasteurized one for this because um, I couldn't get uh, the fresh coconut water. But you know, we're, we're really restructuring and re-energizing and, and adding our own nutrition to this anyway in terms of um, culturing it and put, adding probiotics to it as well. So even if you don't drink pasteurized coconut water, using the pasteurized coconut water for this um, might be something that you want to consider. So, um, we've got the coconut water there. Now you can see the difference. This is a, a two day a two day old fermentation and it, it hasn't reduced. It was just different amounts of coconut water in there. So, you can see it's much cloudier and that's our finished um, drink. And we'll strain that off um, in a second and I'll show you how white the grains have got compared to the ones that have been in, in, the, in the sugar. And so it's really very simple. We take our grains, add them to the coconut water, and then I actually tend not to add any sugar at this point. Um, I'll just let them do their thing. You could if you wanted to add a little bit more sugar, but because we've treated our grains well and we've got them really active, it's gonna be absolutely fine in there. So that again will just go to one side, two days, 48 hours at room temperature. Again, with a, a nut milk bag or similar on the top there. Let's put that to one side. And now we are ready to strain these off. Okay, so exactly the same as before. But this time, as you can see, those, those grains are much whiter. And that's how they would look if you were using white refined sugar in the first stage. It's kind of what they look like as well. Okay, so we'll just put those to one side. Now this, you can drink this just as it is. Um, you can keep it really simple and just slice up a little bit of ginger again, maybe some pear, a um, couple of slices of pear and just put those in there as well. Um, or you can add fruit juice, which is what I'm gonna do. So. Um, quick note on this actually, adding fruit juice at the first stage is not a good idea because the grains themselves don't actually like the acidity of, of particularly orange juice um, or any of those citrus fruits. But adding it at the second stage, because there's sugar in here, this is going to provide an extra second stage fermentation. So I'm just going to put the orange juice into there. It's just one of my favourites is, is coconut, kefir and orange juice. So essentially we've added flavour, we've added more sugar. And then we're going to take our trusty funnel. Again, leave a bit of space at the top there. And just like before, seal it up tight. Two days, room temperature. The, the, uh, the probiotics, even without the grains in there, it's gonna start eating the sugar again and it's gonna fizz up. Um, and again, you might just wanna burp it every day and just let the air out. Or if you're looking for a really fizzy kefir, then you can just leave it sealed for two days. Um, you could actually just put it in the fridge again at this stage, that would be fine. Um, what you'll find is though that as, again, as the kefir eats the sugar in the orange juice, um, it's going to get less sweet. Let, the longer you leave it, the more sour it's going to get. So you might even, just before you drink it, if you want it sweeter, just add a little bit more juice or sugar again. So um, that's kind of what it, what it looks like. You, again, you, you, know, you can keep this in the fridge for like two months. Um, but definitely best served chilled out of the fridge, maybe with some ice cubes. Uh, and this is one that I've had going for a little while now, and I don't know if you can kind of hear, but it's, it's very gassy. So uh, this was coconut kefir with, actually I juiced up some honeydew melon, and, uh, and then I added a little bit of sugar as well. So this, all this kind of stuff in here, is actually, that's actually the, um, the, some of the fiber from the honeydew melon, which is fine. Um, so we'll open this. Again, you just want to be really careful. Yeah, you can see that that's really fizzing up. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of how fizzy it can get. 
after a couple of days and you just kind of want to just be really careful about how much fizz you let out there we go So there we go. Don't be scared of it. It's a, it's a really, it's actually a fun thing to do to see your grains growing and um, you know, you get just this really delicious drink resulting from it. That um, I would actually go fairly easy on the drink as well to begin with, maybe just have a really small glass worth to begin with um, until your body gets used to having that much probiotic culture in there and all that goodness. And um, you'll find that if you drink too much of it in one go, that it will just be too much for your stomach. So that's probably, even now, the, the most amount of kefir that I would drink in, in one go. So uh, yeah, just start out with a few sips. Enjoy that and uh, let me know how you get on.